Do you want to own your manufactured home and the land under it? There are several options from remote acreage to resort community. Want to learn more? Stay tuned. In this video, we will offer an overview for those wishing to own a manufactured home and the land under it. We will cover the different options from acreage to deed restricted communities and more. We will also take a look at some of the financial aspects of owning your own land. Hello, I'm Russ Watson. I created Florida Manufactured Home Living to enrich the lives of manufactured homeowners and educate the public on its benefits. Let's dig in. YouTube has enabled a new feature to help viewers thank creators for the time and effort it takes to make this content. It's called Super Thanks. When you press the Thanks button, a window will pop up allowing you to make a contribution to the channel. You can leave the comment as simply thanks or change it to a comment of your liking. So what are we talking about here? In simple terms, we are talking about a manufactured or mobile home that you own installed on a piece of land that you also own. This can be in a community, a subdivision, or on a larger piece of acreage. Buying or installing a manufactured home on a private lot has all the advantages of conventional home ownership. The chief difference with manufactured housing is that the structure itself is likely to be less expensive. Also, there are fewer restrictions depending upon where you buy. In subdivisions zoned for mobile or manufactured homes, the same restrictions exist as would exist for conventional built homes. Each municipality has its own rules and these would still apply. Indeed, restricted subdivisions, additional rules are included in the deed and pass from owner to owner. 55 plus is a good example. Subdivisions organized under Florida Statute 720 will have common property and an HOA. It is likely that rules, common assessments, and other restrictions will exist in the property deeds within these communities. They typically include a clubhouse, a pool, and other amenities. They are structured identically to site-built resort communities. Another form of deed-restricted subdivision exists within a recreational district. Barefoot Bay is such a place, and it's so large that we did a separate video on just that community. Condominium communities organized under Florida Statute 718, also have an HOA. They have a different set of regulations that govern the HOA and the rights and obligations of property owners within the community. These homes are on one acre parcels, giving the owners a greater degree of privacy. Another strategy is to buy a large piece of acreage and put an inexpensive mobile home on it until you can build something bigger. Subdivisions can still offer substantial lot sizes. They may offer more freedom of choice over such things as fenced in yards, storage of boats and trailers, and even swimming pools. Some communities may have homes of similar age and some may be a mix of new and old. You will also notice a much greater variability in landscaping and lawn care than you will find in more restrictive communities. There are also subdivisions laid out with smaller lot sizes from the beginning. Homes here will be more economical. Communities like this were generally platted for single wide homes, but many people buy adjacent lots so they can fit a double wide or have a larger yard. I also notice the landscaping here is uniform and nicely maintained. This is something you can only determine by visiting a community and driving around. Not everyone is seeking a neighborhood of manicured lawns and sculptured gardens. 
Some folks just want inexpensive housing where they can pretty much do as they please. Of course, so can your neighbors. A deed-restricted subdivision with a common clubhouse, swimming pool, and other amenities is very similar in lifestyle to a mobile home park, but it has the advantage that the property owners in the community own and run the facilities. Each lot is assessed their share of the common expenses and has a vote in electing a board of directors to the HOA who will oversee the community. Larger communities may have full-time staff. Every county in Florida has an assessor and most have online searchable maps that are a great source of information. Here in Sebring Falls, we see the lots delineated and measurements given. Clicking on a parcel, we see the owner. If we click on the common property by the clubhouse, we see it is owned by the homeowners association and that the taxes are distributed among the parcel owners. The difference between a co-op and a subdivision can be seen clearly in the county land records. In this co-op, we see unit numbers listed, but the lots themselves are not measured. If we look at a particular unit, we can see the owner, but when we look at the report under legal description, we see that it is a unit of the Whispering Creek Co-op. The big difference is a co-op can sell the land your home is on, whereas the subdivision cannot. When a mobile home is on leased land, as this one is, it is registered annually and a decal to be displayed prominently is provided. When a titled owner of a mobile home either owns the land or a share of the land, they do not pay annual registration fees. Instead, the owner will pay property taxes just like any other homeowner. These homes are issued a one-time real property decal, which can be transferred to a new owner. The Florida Homestead Exemption applies to all mobile or manufactured homes treated as real property. It starts at $25,000 and provides up to $50,000 in exemptions on your property tax. While not all financial institutions participate, all of the common options to finance a conventional home apply to a mobile or manufactured home when you own the land. So what's best? Buy the land or rent the lot? One deciding factor is going to be how much money do you have? Let's take an example home priced in a nice mobile home park or on your own lot. First, we'll assume you've got plenty of money and you can pay cash either way. Well, that's a no-brainer, unless you want to use that $140,000 for something else. How about if all we have is hundred dollars and we want to keep $40,000 in reserve? The MHP looks about the same, but add a 20-year $140,000 mortgage at 4% and you're going to need a lot more income. There's a lot of other things to consider but I think you can see why either choice might make sense. I hope you found our presentation helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Manufactured homes are a more affordable housing option. On private land or in a community setting, they can make your Florida dream come true. If you'd like to see more videos, covering these options, just click on the link. Thanks for watching and see you next time.